Hey, Tactical Painter back out in the Suits Crafting Woodshop. Welcome back out to the shop. This week out in the shop, we're going to be talking about some of the stuff that we've had going on the last couple of weeks. I know that I did not do a Shop Talk Tuesday last week, and uh, I warned you guys on the previous Shop Talk Tuesday that that might be the case. Uh, my wife was in surgery. I guess I'll just start off with that. Um, she was in surgery to get some stuff removed, and uh, everything went well. She is well on her way to a full recovery. Um, she's already had the weight restriction lifted on the amount that she can pick up, um, so she's already able to pick up our one and a half year old daughter uh, who weighs 20 pounds. Um, so she's well on her way to recovery. So happy. Thank you all, everybody that was uh, keeping us in your prayers and keeping us in your thoughts. We really appreciate that. It means the world to me. It means the world to us. And uh, it definitely was a, a scary thing for me. Um, you know, my wife and I have been together for 13 years now. Um, and we've known each other since I was in middle school. So we've been together for a long time. We've been a part of each other's lives. And uh, so it, it was definitely a trying time for me. So, But we got through it and everything worked out well. So really happy and, uh, and things are going good. All right, so Mother's Day came and went. And uh, I've been working on some stuff in order to do a Mother's Day gift for my wife. One of the things that I was working on, I made a contact... Uh, on Facebook actually through one of the pen turning forums that I've got on Facebook and I met a guy named Vince Krasinski Vince Krasinski him and I got to talking on Facebook and he sent me out something that's really special and I've got them here in this box they're really fragile and he was so kind as to put all over this thing um, you know fragile handle with care um, and and I really appreciate it because these things are just the neatest. I got a dozen of these from him, and what these are is they are lotus pods. So lotus pods that uh, carry the seeds for the lotus plants, lotus flowers that that uh, are just absolutely beautiful flowers. So I've got uh, about a dozen of these or so. And they're of all varying sizes. They come in a lot of different sizes, anywhere between like an inch and a half to two inches wide. And uh, they're fully dry. And he had stabilized and unstabilized versions of them. And I got unstabilized because I'm going to stabilize them myself. And I'm even going to uh, bleach some and then dye them with the cactus juice with the alumilite dyes. And uh, just see how they go. So really excited for those. Um, uh, stabilized and gave three of those to my wife for Mother's Day. Um, her mother passed away. It'll be five years ago this year in October. And lotuses were a big thing for her. She loved lotuses, the plants, um, the flowers, all, everything about lotuses. She was just a huge uh, fan of the lotus plants themselves. And so when she passed away... The lotus kind of became the symbol for her mother. So I picked those up for her and stabilized them up and gave those to her for her Mother's Day. Of course, she opened it and goes, what is this? Nope. <laughs> and then once I explained it to her, she's like, oh, those are oh lotus my gosh, that is so cool. Um, so we're going to be doing up some of those and we're going to see how they turn out. You know, I'm kind of excited. Uh, I haven't seen too many people, if you look on YouTube, there aren't actually too many people that have done these. Um... Probably only actually a handful. I could only find two myself. And so I'm pretty excited to see how these turn out. Her favorite color is blue. And so I actually have five uh, different blues in powder pigments out in my casting shop right now in the pressure pot that are setting up and curing to see what blue is her favorite so that we can cast that up with the lotus pod and see how that turns out. Speaking of casting, uh, I also had a customer this week um, is graduating from a college that's main color is purple and so I cast up a whole bunch of different shades of purple and these just turned out awesome they're spectacular and now that I've done the color testing well I got nothing to do with them um, they're you know they're beautiful I really like this uh, this one it's called deep purple and it's just a wonderful color it's really pretty I wrote the name on it there so I can remember what it was uh, this one was kind of a cool one. His the school colors for him are are purple and uh, gold, and this one was kind of neat. This is a violet bronze. I like, I like how that turned out. It's got that that violet back tone to it, and then the bronze shows up in the front tone. Really kind of neat. I like it. 
Um, but I don't have any projects that these are things are set out for. So now I just I just have these blanks. I mean, this one's a misty lavender, really nice blue purple color to it. And this one I, I really like. I like the depth of this one. This one's called shimmer violet. Really deep, almost like a maroon purple to it, like a burgundy. Really rich color. Really like it. Really pretty. And uh, this kind of happens, you know. I, I do testings, I do color testings, or I'll make a concept pen um, when I'm on a time crunch, especially like in the winter time. If I'm doing pens for customers, I will cast up two of each pen blank just to make sure that if one blows up in grenades, then I've got extras. So um, I bring that up because I've got this box here which is just full of those extra castings. I've got all these beautiful colors. This was a this was supposed to be a San Francisco uh, 49ers blank, so it's got um, red and gold, but the red I added silver powder to it thinking it would make it reflective, and instead it made it look like copper. And wasn't the color I was going for, and so had to redo it. So the crimson that it was supposed to be just ended up looking like copper, and so it was a failed. But it's still a neat blank. It'll make a really cool pen, just not what I was going for. So that's in here. I've got uh, one of these uh, pink with angelite powder pen blanks that I did a while back for a customer. That's in here. Um, let's see. I've got I've got a couple of these. Uh, Dallas Cowboys pen blanks. I had some Dallas Cowboys fans wanted me to make them some football pens. Uh, so I've got some of those that are in here. I've just got all sorts of different assortment of blanks. I've got some Nebula blanks that, um, like these ones, have a little bit of a warp to them. And so I didn't want to sell them online uh, just because they had that warp. But they'd still turn out fine and they'd be great for a slimline pen. This one is a 5 8 inch casting, um, and with that warp, it'd still make a 7mm or an 8mm pen just fine. And it's got beautiful colors to it. I mean, absolutely none of these are um, wastes at all. They all just look fantastic. Here's another Nebula one. It's got that warp in it. but And this one's a 3 quarter inch. So it'd still make a wonderful pen, and uh, it'd still do just fine. So I've got a few other things in here. Let's see. Oh, here's that one of those red ones that I did a while back. You guys remember me showing this one off if you've been watching for a while. Um, so this was a... I forget what this one was for. But they wanted a red pen. Just straight red. No nothing added to it. So we did one of those up. And this is the second one off of that. So I was also doing some testing to make up some army camo. And I did it successfully, but I didn't need this because the guy actually wanted a uh, hybrid done of it. So I had to redo it in wood using the recipe that I made with this one. So, I mean, this one's just sitting here. So what I'm thinking of doing with this box of all of these just test pieces is go and just sell them off as like a bulk pack. If you guys are interested in that, let me know. Um, you know, maybe uh, five for... 10 bucks or 10 for 20 or or you know 10 for 15 and just you know see what I can get for them I don't have a direct use for them myself and they're just sitting here taking up space in the shop and if you guys can use them you want them I'd be happy to sell them to you so let me know what you think and uh, we'll get some of these uh, sold off so I've got um, some hybrid some honeycomb hybrids in here uh, this one was a teal and black uh, this one was a test cosmic cloud that turned out just fantastic. Uh, let's see what else do we got? Oh, here's one of the army camos with a piece of wood in it because I made two just to make sure I, if one blew up and failed, I had another one, and so I've got one of those in there. So I've got some hybrids, I've got some honeycomb blanks. So yeah, I think I'll just throw those up on Etsy at some point. Um, if you guys show any interest in them, let me know in the comments section down below, and I'll throw those up, and you guys can come by and I'll just do like a random grab bag and just throw them out there. So, and these purple ones will be going too. Alright, so the Lazy Susan project, I'm still working on that. When you guys saw me last week, I said that I needed to round over all the edges and I've since done that. I took a 3 8 inch uh, round over bit and I hit all of the surfaces with a that 3 inch 3 8 inch round over bit. So now all the surfaces have a round over on them, including the top and bottom of the table here. I gotta go through and do some cleanup work on it, um, but it worked out pretty well. I actually made my own little router table. I just took a piece of three quarter inch uh, plywood and then 
drilled a hole on the top, drilled the holes where it needed to line up with the screws for the router, which is still mounted in here. And I was like, well, shoot, I need to mount this somewhere. Um, I need to have it safely secure so that way it doesn't spin out of control or get a catch and it shoots off somewhere. And I was trying to think of something to do, and uh, I've got one of those like uh, workstation tables that clamps from both sides. It's got the two turn wheels, and it's got a three-quarter inch top. So I took some section of three-quarter inch plywood. I made a spacer in here that goes lengthwise, about a quarter of the way down the board. And then I, took, I glued that in, screwed that in with three wood screws so it holds securely. And then I took a cross-section piece and mounted that to it, glued it in put a couple of screws in there to hold it securely and then this just slid right into place on that that uh, workstation and it held it in place just fine I needed to put some weight on the back side so I just put my foot on that back side of that workstation and it held didn't tip didn't rock didn't catch didn't do nothing I rounded all those over and it worked great so sometimes just a little imp improvisation ingenuity didn't cost me a thing to do it except for the wood screws and uh, it worked really really well so you got to think about safety though when you're doing stuff like that because I was looking at it going okay now it's going to be heavy to one side I need to put a counterweight on the other side and so I put my foot on the opposite side and worked from that side um, so that way if I did have a tip or a catch it would go away from me instead of toward me it was locked in plenty tight in place so I was plenty safe doing it and uh, but you got to think of those things you know you got to think of them ahead of time what happens if this what happens if this what happens if this and then do stuff to prevent those sometimes you know it comes with experience I've got a lot of woodworking experience and so I was thinking of all those things as I was setting this up and safety was is always my number one priority when I was in high school I took woodworking class and I had a woodshop teacher his name was Mr. Sundano and his favorite thing it was called 210Q and 2 10 Q. So at the end of the day, you should always leave with 210 Q. Two eyes, 10 fingers, and quality work. And so that was his big thing. 210 Q. Two eyes, 10 fingers, quality work. That's what he wanted at the end of the day. And if you could leave the shop with 210 Q, then it was a good day. It was a good day out in the shop, even if your project was going terribly as long as you were doing quality work while you were doing it which doesn't make a whole lot of sense but things don't always go well and as long as you aren't selling the crap and you're fixing the crap to turn it into something nice 210Q is achieved so 210Q, two eyes, ten fingers and quality work so that's what I always achieved for so safety was instilled upon me um, when I was in high school and same with my dad he instilled a lot of safety values on me and so it's always a number one priority when we're out here in the shop working. If I feel that something isn't safe, I won't do it until I find a way to make it safe. And so that's what I've always strived for. And some of you guys have even seen the video where my little girl comes out to the shop and she's standing behind me. That wasn't safe. I took uh, corrections and stopped that situation so they don't just come out to the shop and surprise me anymore like that. And so... 210Q, I put it in place right then, that was my first project ever out in my new shop, and uh, it caught me off guard, I didn't know that it was going to be an issue, I didn't expect my wife just to bring my little girl out here while I had something spinning, and so 210Q, I corrected that, and we don't have that safety issue anymore, and they still come out to the shop, and they'll look at what I'm doing, but I won't have the equipment running, I won't be doing things while they're out here, and eventually she'll be old enough that maybe we can, and but I'll have a face shield, I'll have a schmock on, you know, I'll have stuff in place to keep her safe, and she'll be of the mindset enough that she'll know not to engage in the equipment while it's going and do any of that stuff, but until she's of that age, she's not going to be out here while equipment's running. So my son, however, I've got a 13-year-old boy as well, I'm going to be probably bringing him out here to try and do some of this stuff here eventually because he's of that age where he is able to grasp all that stuff, he's able to make his own things, um, he just needs some guidance and some support in order to get along and, and do it himself. So we're actually going to be looking at doing that soon. If you guys want to see a video of him out here doing that, go ahead and let me know in the comments section down below and maybe we'll do something like that uh, on the YouTube channel here. You may have noticed that colors are showing up a lot better when I'm showing you stuff in front of the screen. I 
finally uh, bit the bullet and invested in some lighting for the shop. So I've got a 14-inch uh, ring light that my camera is mounted on, and so now I actually have light flooding in from the front instead of just the overhead lights, which uh, the overhead lights, I mean, are fine, but when I'm trying to show you something right in front of the screen, things don't always show up. So now I can show you things like these blanks, and you can actually see details in them, nice shimmering colors and different details. You know, I can show you this hybrid blank and you can actually see the hybrid running through it and you can see the reflections coming off of the blank and how nicely that looks on the back side whereas if I just had the overhead lighting turn that off if I just had the overhead lighting you wouldn't be able to see that nearly as well it doesn't show up nearly as good but I turn this back on and look at how nice that looks so I invested in some lighting I know that it's been a problem out here and you've probably heard me say it in a few videos um, when trying to show you things, you know, I always apologize because my lighting's terrible. I have no more excuses. So I've got a good, nice 14-inch ring light that's out here, which is why I don't have my glasses on. Um, and I don't have any machinery running, so that's not a danger. But if I put my glasses on, then you can totally see the reflection of my ring light in my glasses. So I figured I'd take those off. You guys can see my beautiful face. <laughs> So I figured I'd take my glasses off, that way you didn't have that distraction of the ring light reflecting back. Um, but of course I'll have my glasses on for safety whenever I'm working with any of the equipment. And I'll have the light actually at a, at a side angle um, so it's illuminating the project because you guys usually don't see my face except for on Shop Talk Tuesdays. Oh, the Calico Spalted Maple Burrow Blanks. I have got those cut up. I've got them stabilized. I just need to come out and sand them down and get those surfaces all smooth. Um, it was actually a pretty cool thing. So I put up a little video, which I'll put right here, uh, where I was actually cutting all those up on my new bandsaw. And I threw it on to Instagram and I tagged uh, Rikon Tools in it. And they actually featured me on their own Instagram page, which was kind of neat. Uh, I, they featured me on their own Instagram page. People got on there, they actually saw it, and they started linking to my Instagram and seeing things and liking what they were seeing. So it was pretty cool. So if you guys have joined me on this video because you saw that, you know, please feel free to throw a thumbs up down there, comment in the section down below. Let me know where you guys are coming from when you're seeing these videos. I'm kind of interested to know where my audience is coming from, things that you're interested in seeing. You can always leave those in the comment sections down below. I always read through those. I like to see what you guys have, uh, you know, the ideas that you have of stuff going on. And uh, we'll see what we can visit out here in the shop. I don't always have a whole lot of time. Um, we are working at getting more staffing at my work, so I should be out in the shop more here coming up in the near future. So we'll just see how that goes. I'm really excited. This week I actually got an order on Etsy. I've got a guy that I've been working with, those purple blanks that I showed you earlier. Um, we're going to be doing a Curly Koa Super Hybrid. So it's going to have a section of Curly Koa with a natural live edge going into that deep purple blank that I showed you earlier. I'm going to cast up some of that deep purple resin and then embed some honeycomb down in it. So that's going to be a fun one. I'm going to be doing that one in an editor G2 conversion. So that's going to be awesome. So really excited for that one. We're going to get that going this week and uh, we'll just see how that one turns out. So that's it for this week. Um, I know it's a long one and so sorry to, uh, as Nick Zimetti says, waffle on. Um, but, you know, I wanted to give you guys an update how my wife's surgery went, some of the test projects we've got going, Mother's Day, and all that stuff. So thanks so much for joining me out in the shop this week. I'm going to be getting a video up this Friday for a circuit board blank that I cast up. It was a purple circuit board blank that I cast up actually for a coworker, one of the guys that left. And now we're having to replace, which is why we're short staffed. But I made him up a circuit board pen. He used to be an IT guy. And so we made that up for him. And then uh, I ran a video on it. So now I'm in the process of doing the editing. So that should be up by Friday. So be on the lookout for that. So I'm going to go ahead and cut it there. This is Tactical Painter out in the Suits Crafting Wood Shop. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. We'll throw a subscribe button here in the center. Check out some of my videos over here on the sides. And this is Tactical Painter out here in the Wood Shop signing out. You guys take care and happy turning.